hear me? All of you? Audible? Can you hear me? Or I'll use this individual hand if I need. Now, human language is a complex thing. Uh, why? Because the other day, the other teacher might have mentioned how animal language is different from human language. One of the difference is that uh, human capacity to combine sounds in any language. In all languages, there are fixed number of alphabets, then fixed number of sounds. Sometimes they increase or decrease with time. So 7th century Tibetan is different now, of course, so you have more sounds. Now, human language, uh, human language allows human beings to use alphabets for writing. Writing is not today's topic, but allow them to use sounds of the alphabets in order to combine them, use them in almost endless possibilities. But these endless possibilities must be meaningful possibilities. I mean, you can use the alphabet of the sound uh, and join it with pa and combine it in any way you like. Aisa to nahi hai, but uh, you can create me meaningful words, new words uh, by experimenting. Poetry allows you, poetry allows us to experiment with sounds more, with parts of speech more. Academic write writing allows us less. But we are beginning this class with complexity of human language. Now, when a child learns a language automatically, start speaking by the age of two, three, whatever. And later, this language is acquired by imitating, by learning grammar. On, okay. So language acquisition, you know, the hu people, human beings, children, uh, they keep learning it. But our subject that we are doing here is to understand the system, how it works. So as far as spoken is concerned, as far as pronunciation is concerned, we have to look at the sounds, number of sounds of any language. Tibetan has number of sounds, in English has number of sounds, Hindi has it. English has 44 number of sounds. I will be using a more technical word for sound because that is not good enough. The, the word in phonetics for sound is phoneme. Soon I will, of course, bring that word to you. So today's topic is phonetics and phonology. We first of all have to differentiate, by the way, in a, in a basic way you understand phonetics and phonology is about speech sounds, how we pronounce, how we put stress on words, how we divide words into syllables, how we differentiate between consonants and vowels. By, well, all these words that I'm using are not new to students, this much I presume. Like what is a vowel, what is a consonant, even though I will be shedding some light on, on these concepts once again. But the very first thing is that every language has phonetics as well as phonology. What, first of all, how do we differentiate, how do we understand what is phonetics, what is phonology? Now, everything has a physical side and a mental side. Language too has, physically speaking, the sounds that you hear, the sounds that you produce, physically speaking. Right? So that dimension of, of language which deals with the production of sounds, actual sounds, not imaginary sounds, but production of sounds which we call articulation of sounds, to articulate, to utter, to speak. Uh, physically, that branch of linguistics we call phonetics. Now within this you will have how many number of sounds are there, where are they produced? You know, when you speak all the sounds of Tibetan, there is a certain position of these, these sounds. Now, for example, the sound P at the beginning of parent, the word parent. This sound P can only be made only by doing one thing. And that is, you first of all close your lips, stop the air which is coming out and then release it. No other sound can be made in this way. Even if something as similar as B also sounds similar. B, again you close your lips, you release the air, but P and B will have a crucial difference. Baad mein, uh, uh, later on I'll talk about it. So position, position, our mouth, our lungs, respiratory system, this is the voice box. Uh, I have a diagram and you have your notes. Uh, positions of sounds, physical positions of sounds, at the front of the mouth, uh, tip of the tongue, 
There are some sounds which you produce by using one lip and teeth, upper teeth and lower lip. Sounds like f. By the way, it's, it's f or v or similar sounds. Few of these sounds are made right at the, at the front. Now, there are certain organs involved in it. Once again, I'm talking about physical dimensions of sounds. Air is produced. Now, sounds can be divided into two categories, consonants and vowels. At the very beginning, I want to simplify ki what is a consonant, what is a vowel, so that you don't ask, ask this again, ever. Because it's as simple as saying ki we, we make sounds as much as we breathe. With breathing, we are making sounds all the time. But those sounds in which you don't stop the air, just let it release automatically, like a, e, o, u, r, vowel sounds. So all of those who, who think there are five vowels in English letter, English alphabet, um, five is the number of the alphabets. So alphabets are those letters we write. But I'm not speaking about alphabets. I'm talking about sounds, something, something different from, from the alphabet, written and spoken. Today's class is entirely based on spoken English. Pronunciation, word stress, syllable, consonant, etc. So sounds, I was saying, sounds which are unobstructed sounds without any stopping. There are 20 Eng English vowel sounds, not alphabets, but 20 English vowel sounds. Some of them are very long, like I give you a word, word like sheet. Now the middle sound of the word sheet is a vowel sound, E, a long E sound. But if you shorten it, it becomes a word which I will not use. I'll go to use another word, bit. Now, you don't, you're not saying beat, and instead of the long vowel E, now I'm using a short vowel E. So alf alphabet is I, alphabet is I, but I'm not concerned about the alphabet. When we will talk about syntax, then we will be using the alphabets or grammar or parts of speech, uh, whatever comes in writing. Lekin, uh, sounds are concerned with with flow of air, if it is open flow of air, unobstructed, with, without any rukavat, if you produce these sounds, then they are vowel sounds. Rest of the sounds which you stop the air or block the air or partially, partially block the air, matlab, half block, half release, all those kind of sounds are consonants. Examples I've already given, p, b, you know, you, you hold it, you stop it and then release it. So consonants, vowels are common to all languages and we must know how we differentiate these sounds. This is the basic. So phonetics will study the physical properties of uh, how long is the sound, where is it produced, which organs are involved in producing these sounds. That is the physical side, the material side of, for example, you buy a car, you have a car, well, be happy, you have a car, imaginary. Uh, if you have a car, all the physical things that you see, the components, the tires, the, the steering wheel, whatever, you know, that is something we are going to study the, the phonetics of the car, let's say. Car, in this case, is the language that I'm talking of. But phonology, phonology is, is the scientific study of how these sounds come together and begin to make meanings. The moment I say meanings, I hope students understand meanings is the area of your mind mental. So I am I'm now differentiating from the physical to the mental. Phonology is the branch of linguistics which deals with how we produce, how we make words, how we add, change the parts of speech, how we add prefixes, suffixes in all languages. So the mental processes of, of using these sounds and understanding um, changes that occur over, year, over the years for, for uh, language that branch is phonology. So I have just begun and talked about what is phonetics and phonology. I have few slides and there are many words, some diagrams, some technical stuff, but I just need your attention because on base of that, there'll be some questions. <clears throat> okay, so technically, academically, phonetics, and when, I, when I'm saying these words, all languages of the world are being talked about, not just English. So phonetics is something which linguists write. The, the symbols of those sounds, they have written in, in 
uh, an alphabet that they have made, we call it International Phonetic Alphabet, IPA. Now, IPA is not ABCD. IPA is an alphabet of symbols of sounds. So the total number of sounds in English are 44, 20 is the number for vowels, 24 is the number for consonants. Why is this important, vowels and consonants? Because when I will start talking about formation of words, then we will have to talk about these combinations. Like a, a consonant begins a word, then a vowel is followed, followed by a consonant, different combinations. So um, also, you know, some reading list was given to students. Um, this is, these are the 44 English sounds, th something I was talking about. And these are the symbols of the sounds. Now, surely they don't look like A, B, C, D. And this is English phonetic sounds, phonetic. I mean, the physical properties are given a symbol. Tibetan language has its own sounds and its own symbols. Many of them are similar to these. Many are not similar. Now, phoneticians have made an international phonetic alphabet. It's a big chart, which is not possible to bring here, but, but it will be distributed later. On that chart, you have symbols of sounds of all the world. So from that chart, you can find all the sounds used in Tibetan, German, Russian, whichever language, as well as English. So IPA, International Phonetic Alphabet, as well as um, the phonemic chart, which is the 44 symbols of the English sounds. Now, some of these sounds, you can see the top left corner has two dots. The top left corner has two dots. Two dots comes in many words, uh, many symbols, right? So the two dots denotes long sound. You also have some examples if, if they are readable. The first one is a, is a long E sound, and the example is sheep, sheet, or eagle. And there are many words in which this sound will be used. I am not going to spend, of course, the entire class on, on describing these, but the, the letters in pink are the 20 vowel sounds. The letter in the blue are the consonant sounds. Abhi, two minutes ago, I, I was talking about what is the basic difference between consonant and vowel. And I'll be asking you again and again, I want you to remember it. What is the basic difference? Otherwise, all 44 are sounds. How, how have they decided that 24 of them are consonants? All these 24 are air which was stopped or half stopped and then released. All the above 20 sounds are free flow of air. Chahe wo koi ho, e ho, o ho, u ho. All of these are like that. Now, let us give a definition to phonetics, the, the subject of phonetics. And you know, uh, like, even though I want to bring in many terms, I, I want to stop here for a moment and raise this question. Why is study of phonetics important? I mean, what are the reasons that you want to, uh, or how will it benefit you, the, the science of sounds, or the system in which the mental combinations of all these sounds are important? One reason could be that since human language is complex, it's different from animal language, surely students and researchers want to study this um, system. They want to understand it. Now, what will happen if they understand the system? What will happen if they have the sounds and the symbols on their fingertips? What will happen if you understand how stress is given on the right syllable within a word? What will happen with many other things that phonetics involves? Well, one thing we can, we can say is that when, now this is one big reason why phonetics is important. So instead of just going with definitions and words, I think it's better to first talk about why is it important? For me, if anyone is learning a foreign language, suppose I learn, suppose I want to learn Tibetan, which for me is foreign language. Suppose many of you want to improve in English, considering that it is foreign, second language, third language. You know, already in your mind, you have a system of your native language. You begin this journey by having the symbols and the sounds, which I English ka dikha ra tha, already you have the same set of symbols of your own mother tongue. And suppose you don't learn 
the, the system of the foreign language and simply start reading, simply start reading words uh, in the foreign tongue, something like this will happen. Imagine, imagine there is a word, imagine for a moment that a Japanese guy or a girl is trying to learn English. Now English is a foreign language for the Japanese student. Now all this study, if the student does not follow, there will be problems of pronunciation. There will be problems of not knowing accurate sounds, their symbols, and it will be very difficult to use the second language, foreign language, phonological system in my first language. So something like this would happen. If I write a word like ice hockey, this is a word in English. Are you familiar with the word ice hockey? It's the name of a game, sport, ice hockey. Now, some Japanese tried to read this word without knowing the symbols and without knowing the sounds. So, you know, the, the letters are written in front of the Japanese person. And look at what happens with having the knowledge of Japanese phonetics, which is the mother tongue of, of the student, having that knowledge, if you simply read the line or the letters, the pronunciation will be something like this. The English word is ice hockey, and the Japanese guy, without learning the system, will read something like aisu hauke, yeah. uh, something like this, at least 80% like this. There's another word, word like birthday cake. Now, I have taken these examples from books, of course. Um, now, birthday cake. Uh, again, the Japanese has given this word. It, it will sound like basudei keki. Uh, and of course, I can also see a nod coming from the Japanese guy who respects everyone. But the reason I'm trying to uh, explain is it is important to understand the phonetic system of the foreign language as important it is, it is for me to, to learn the Tibetan. Uh, I cannot simply start reading uh, the alphabets. Alphabets are for writing. As far as spoken is concerned, we have to follow what is phonetics. Phonetics is the study of making speech sounds, hearing speech sounds. I hope you can read this. And people who are working around phonetics are called phoneticians. The word phonetics has been taken from Greek. And inside the word, you find another word called phone. Phone in Latin, Greek, I guess, means sound. And there is no surprise that even the word telephone has speech sounds as a inserted meaning, right? So for example, uh, there are these phones, there are these phonemes b and k uh, in English language, and I'm sure in Tibetan as well. We can call, this is the first lesson, we can call these individual speech sounds phones, phonemes as well. Now, I want students to do a few things as they read this. Not just read it, try to understand it. And because today's class is about phonetics, what is phonetics? Looking at the physical properties of sounds. So, how do they see physical properties? Well, uh, first of all, imagine that you have organs in your, in your body. And these organs which are required for making speech sounds, you have a voice box. Its technical name is larynx. Uh, even if you forget it, not a problem. But you have it in your throat. But within the larynx, you have other things like vocal cords, something we call vocal cords. Now, this is a membrane, some kind of a muscle. All of us have. And there are some sounds which are produced when your vocal cords vibrate. Then there are other sounds which are produced when the vocal cords don't vibrate. We call these sounds voiced sounds, voiceless sounds. I'm coming to there. But imagine that you, you close your vocal cords tight. Kaise? Well, just imagine that, that the vocal cords are closed tightly, the air is difficult to pass, and you block the airflow in your throat. Well, and try to say this word, uh-oh. Uh -oh. You know, try to say, and try to say it over and over. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. What you have just done is that you have by producing this sound, you have involved your physical organs. This sound, uh-oh, cannot be produced by first blocking your vocal cords and then releasing it. This is just a demonstration that, that sounds are made physically. Of course, we know this, but 
technically we should also talk about it. And the sounds that we stop in the throat are called glottal stops. Now, whether you remember it or not, not the most important thing, but sounds can be divided into some categories. One of those sounds, out of the 44 I'm talking about today, out of the 44, there are some which, which are glottal sounds. They are produced from here, h, g, no, g sound is also coming from there. Now, imagine, you know, your, your vocal cords are vibrating. <clears throat> Um, in this word zoo, the first letter, the first, not letter, again, let us not confuse it. The first sound, the first sound, z. Now, it is not z, it is not z, q, because if you say it is z, then you are adding another a uh with z. We have to just look at individual single sound. So, as soon as you see this, it is z. Now, if you can just put your fingers on the throat for a moment and try to say zzz. You will absolutely feel the vo something is vibrating. And that something is the vocal cords. There are two membranes, two muscles, let's say. And they, now there are some words which vibrate. Similarly, if you say b, b, uh, like in, like in Bombay, b, you know, it vibrates. But if you say p, which is, which is the first letter of player, if you say p, it will not, it will not vibrate, at least not continuously vibrate, it won't. So then there are some sounds which are voiced, some sounds which are voiceless, voice because the, the vocal cords are vibrating. Try to say uh, this sound, s and, when, and when you say s, nothing vibrates. Why we are talking about all of this is because every language has these categories of different physical organs are involved and sounds are made. Okay, so vibrating sounds are called voiced sounds. This is an important word to remember. And there are many vowels and many consonant sounds like z, like m, like b, b and g, all of them are uh, voiced sounds. <clears throat> Then of course I've talked about if you say Sam, ka, Sam is the word and the first sound is S sound. The air flows freely through your, we call it glottis. Uh, so vocal cords and within the vocal cords or the, the organ we call glottis. Now non-vibrating sounds I've just explained are voiceless. For example, S, F, P, T, nothing vibrates. <clears throat> then there are some exceptional sounds like in English, h. This is a semi-partial, let's say, flow of air. You don't stop the air very strongly. Once again, the sound comes from, from the vocal cords, from the noisy turbulence disturbance in the vocal cords. So there can be at least these ways of looking at words. This is one way of looking at how speech sounds are produced. One way of them is you close your vocal cords tight and block the airflow, jaise shuru mein humne kiya, uh, g. You vibrate your vocal cords, you know, you allow it to, you know, you are not holding it tight. Some sounds are made like that. You hold your vocal cords open. S -s -s, for example, it is open, nothing vibrates. And in, 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 in the sound, h, you tighten your vocal cords and then release them a little bit. Now, sounds are important because we are trying to understand how is the sound produced. There are some ways of, of saying how these sounds are produced. Now, basically sounds are air moving from the lungs, from the respiratory system coming out. But there are many ways this air moves through your vocal tract and you allow to produce different sounds. Phonetics is not only study of physical sounds, but it is also a study of differentiating, you know, trying to understand how one sound is different from the other. For example, zzz is, is a voiced, sound which, which happens right at the glottis, at the back of your throat. In, and in contrast, you have, s, the, you know, they are very similar in writing z and s, but they are very different as far as physical organs are concerned. S, the s sound is a front uh, sound. I mean, it's, it's, it takes place right at the beginning of, uh, at the front of the mouth. Now, how it happens, is, is for phon phonetics is very important. Ph phoneticians call it the manner of 
like how manner in, in the manner in which that sound was produced there are six most common ways for languages in which sounds are produced some sounds are called stops uh, why are they called stops simply because you completely stop the air for example at the beginning of the sound p and then you release it actually you have 100% stopped it sealed it and released it and similarly t now of course you don't you don't close your lips for using t but once again if you try to imagine you have touched the tip of your tongue with the upper alveolar ridge of the mouth blocked the air and then released it so all the sounds will not be produced like this the these two sounds have different positions uh, p is right at the front t is slightly back and within the mouth you know i've, I've provided charts i i wanted you to go through those uh, especially there is one i also want one anyway uh, but there is one in which you have a mouth and then you have all the sounds labeled according to the positions like labial dental labiodental alveolar alveolar is when when you touch the tongue with the upper teeth ridge uh, or glottis is something i've already mentioned when sounds are coming from your throat then of course leave it now for a moment we have to move on with with many of these many of these categories fricatives is another category of sounds fricative mein jo shabd hai friction is maybe a word many people understand huh? friction what is friction then only we understand what is a fricative and when you walk on the floor you do a lot of friction when you rub something with another surface friction is produced friction means when something touches and the the contact is pretty rough and then it it is not very smooth and then you release it so fricatives are those sounds in which the mouth system is going to it going to release the air after some friction after some rubbing after some partial allowing for example the, the letter of course can you hear me uh, the the first the first sound in the in the word father the very first sound and now i cannot call it f f is the letter i am talking of the sound see likhne mein to f hai bolne mein f thodi hai because if you say it is f you are adding another a which is a vowel sound to this individual distinct different maine abhi bola na phonetics has to understand how sounds are different from each other similarly if you make s sound again there is friction there is rubbing of two organs and between the tongue and the alveolar ridge alveolar ridge is be just behind the upper teeth just behind the upper teeth you have uh, if you if you think you have some some organ s sound is is coming from there nasals this this is a very typical sound in every language tibetans tibetan is very nasalized language when you say ngamang when you, i learned to say this after all these years after struggling a lot but some people still can't but wait uh, very few languages i came to know very few languages have this nasal ng ng sound right at the beginning of the word english may you have no word or maybe very less words in which you have ng right at the beginning but which are the nasal sounds n which is different from ng ngamang uh, n m and and third one is uh, ng now why do we call them nasals because the nasal cavity which is the nose so again air will now be released from the nasal tract rather than the mouth so when you say whenever you say n your mouth is not releasing the sound it is coming out from the nasal cavity similarly m and ng 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 so to make this sound you stop the air air flow at the wahi teeth ke piche wala just behind the teeth alveolar ridge while the air is going out from now some people even do experiments like you can actually have a mirror put it under your nose and try to say n m and you will find the condensation of the air air on the so if you don't believe me i give you this uh proof okay approximants approximate 
some sounds some sounds are approximately consonants or approximately vowels well i started the lecture by saying human language is a complex system of sounds there is one sound like w jaise the very first the very first sound in the word woman w and you can only produce it by rounding off your lips both the lips huh? w, w, you you can slow it down stop at the very first sound w. so what you're actually doing is stopping the air a little bit and then slowly releasing it only then ye consonant banega similarly the word yes ka very first sound ha, is a consonant the the hindi wala y is exactly what i'm talking about it is uh, shown a symbol like the letter j now ये क्यों इम्पॉर्टेंट है कि सी इफ यू हैव ऑलरेडी लेटर्स ट्वेंटी सिक्स लेटर्स ऑफ इंग्लिश अल्फाबेट यू विल नीड मोर लेटर्स टू टू असाइन टू गिव टू अदर अदर साउंड सो यॉर एग्जाम्पल द साउंड य कैन ओनली बी प्रोड्यूस्ड इफ द वोकल ट्रैक्ट नियर द फ्रंट ऑफ द पैलेट नाउ पैलेट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर आवर माउथ आई एम टॉकिंग ऑफ द लिप्स द टीथ and uske baad alveolar ridge i have just mentioned just behind the teeth above upper side and uske piche you have this palate and palate can be divided into hard palate soft palate so if you can if you can go from the front to back a little bit you have hard palate and then you have soft palate then turn comes for your gala for your throat which is which is the glottis all these sounds will be made from there okay uh, affricates fricative fricative was a word we used a while ago well i know this is going to be long and boring but um, you have to be you know you have to be you have to thank thank sange for for the chai he is giving you uh, just at the right time affricates are the stops nahi affricates are sounds which which uh, again have half friction like ch sound in church the first sound in church is uska symbol hai ch or the first sound in ship and hindi ka sh is that a sound available in tibetan sh, sh sound like to do sh huh? and now while you make all these sounds please try to see the position and the manner in which they are produced which organs are सो आज की क्लास के बाद इफ यू इफ यू हैव सम अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ डिफरेंसेस बिटवीन साउंड्स आई थिंक दैट विल बी एन अचीवमेंट इन वन आवर देन ऑफ कोर्स वॉवल्स वॉवल्स आर ऑल्सो साउंड्स इन इन अ वॉवल द वेरी डेफिनेशन ऑफ अ वॉवल इज दैट द एयर विल फ्लो फ्लो फ्रीली विदाउट एनी ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन आई रिमार्क दैट वॉवल्स आर डिफरेंशिएटेड फ्रॉम कॉन्सोनेट्स सो बट all sounds will not be just free flow of air while freely flowing you know these uh, this air will be given a certain direction if i make the sound o you can clearly see you are giving a lot of space to the air to flow if you say a uh, which is again a sound you are not giving a lot of space to so it's a short vowel a uh, o is a long vowel similarly there is a sound in english at the beginning of the word apple the very first sound in the word apple is a now you can only make the sound if you if you flatten your tongue drop it down and let the air pass through the sides it's a lateral sound a um <clears throat> and there are other so vowel sounds there are 20 vowel sounds we will come back to this now abhi tak kya kiya how it happens what is the manner of articulation of sounds now where it happens again i've talked about it briefly but very quickly some sounds are called bilabial sounds labia is labial bilabial uh, means lips so the sounds which are made in which both your lips bi matlab two both your lips are involved will be called bilabials like p b m you know your lips are involved even though in m the air flow is different air flow ka position will be nasal then there are sounds like labiodentals by the way i i'm going to provide the the uh, ppt with with the sw you can all find it there are many slides about 40 slides but if you if you're comfortable writing then then it's all right labio matlab lips dental matlab teeth 
So there are sounds which are produced by involving both lips and uh, teeth. For example, again, father may f or victory may v. You should try to make these sounds as you read. Victory ka first sound v v v and father ka first sound f. Then there are some sounds like jaise d mein hota hai ya uh, this. There are two different sounds. Jinska symbols hain uh, th, think mein hai jaise or then mein first sound unka symbol difficult hoga maybe but then uh, we'll provide you the charts with Jesse, for example, the word then, the very first sound is, is an interdental sound. Matlab, dental ke, do dental ke beech mein se position mein kahi. Alveolar is again sound which I have mentioned. Just behind your upper teeth, you have the ridge, palate ka front. So we call them alveolar behind the teeth, huh? behind the teeth. And all the sounds like t, d, s, z, n, you know, this alveolar position is involved in these. Palatals is when the sounds are produced only on the upper side of the palate. Palate, we bata rahe, soft palate, hard palate. Are there any sounds in Tibetan like these palatals? So there are sounds like shh. And when you say shh, your upper palate is involved. The, that organ is involved. You are trying to stop the air there and then release it. Or y, once again, upper palate is involved. Ng is again the upper palate involved. Wheeler uh, is, we are, you know, if you noticed, we are moving from the front to back. So, wheeler is, there is a, there is a thing in your throat called velum. Glottis is further down. Uske upar hai velum. So, soft palate, jo hai apka palate ka last portion, it begins. And k. K or G, these are the sounds you make, uh, we, we call them wheelers. This is, of course, the diagram of different positions. And we have all these technical words in phonetics. So far, I'm talking about phonetics, not phonology. So how do you understand I'm talking about phonetics? The two things are different. How do you understand I'm talking about phonetics? Because I am... Because we are doing the physical, we are looking at the organs, we are looking at the duration, we are looking at the sound, we are looking at the physical properties of speech sounds. Then of course consonants, if we, if we differentiate vowels and consonants, so there are consonants which, uh, <clears throat> when, whenever you make a consonant like k or g or any consonant, three things are involved in it. Uh, one is whether the consonant is a stop, fricative, nasal, affricate, just ka bhi baat kiya maine. Or other thing is, what is the position of the consonant? Labial, interdental, bilabial, palatal, velar, glottal, abhi baat kiya hai maine. Then of course, the third thing I've mentioned, whether the consonant is voiced, voiceless. Anyone remembers 10 minutes ago? So you have vocal cords, if they vibrate, if they vibrate when the consonant is produced, you call it? Voiced, simple. And if it doesn't, give me the sound with which it vibrates. Z, z, s, snake mein nahi hai. S mein there is no vibration. And this works in Tibetan and all other languages. Now, <clears throat> we, are, we are talking of phonetics. Still, phonetically speaking, voicing is the only difference between these two sets of, of sounds. Otherwise, the position and the manner is, is almost the same. What am I saying? I am saying that if you say P, B, T, D, K, G, the manner and the place is identical. Matlab, the position of the pr production of the sound is same. The only difference is to, to see the difference is to see whether it is voiced or voiceless. So for example, P is voiceless. B is voiced. T, come to this. T, uh, this one. No vibration. D, do you hear? D, 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 D. Do it five, six times. No vibration. D, D, drama wala, drama. Drama kar rahe ho kya? D. And finally, K, voiceless and G. So, of course, 
all of these things are important for students of linguistics, those who are, are very keen to study the physical properties, the branch we call phonetics. Now we come to phonology. Remember the car and how these components, physical components ka jo function hai, jo unka mental uh, purpose hai, like of all these sounds, that is I guess what, what we understand by phonet phonology. In order to speak any language, you need more than sounds in isolation. Sirf sound se bola nahi jata hai. So, for example, English has 44 sounds, Tibetan has mel 40, more, less, jo bhi number of sounds. These are the physical things. But bola kaise jayega by mentally combining these sounds, keeping them at front or later or making, it, you know, endless combinations of vowels and consonants. So, we need to see that in we are able to combine speech sounds into meaningful sound patterns. This is what phonology does. Phonetics may ye nahi hua. Phonetics may we have we have only looked at position, organs involved, manner in, in which it was used, duration, you know the physical properties. Lekin clearly I repeat it that phonology will study how speech sounds combine into a meaningful. For example, a r m three sounds. If you combine them, you have a meaningful word arm, arm. Uh, but if you if you cannot find a meaningful, um, for example, uh, am, uh, for example, any other combination which will not have a meaning, then it will be phonologically incorrect. You know, the, the meaningful pattern will not be made. So the folks who try to understand speech sounds by combining them, how sounds make syllables, syllable is something we will be talking. Ye sara, sara ka sara phonologist ka branch hai, phonology ka study hai. Consider these two words now. Now we have moved, did you notice? We have moved from single sounds to words. But words once again are made up of single sounds. So, but let, let's look at these two words. Konsa two words? Uh, B double E T, words matlab letters written and B E A M beam. So when you find the phonetic symbol of these written letters, it looks like this. Beat has a long vowel sound, that is why there are two dots, these two dots, and you, you pronounce there are three sounds involved in it. First is a consonant. Are you with me? First sound is a consonant. It is a voiced consonant. Do you understand me? Good, we are going good. And the second sound is a long vowel, E sound, and then T, T is voiceless. Now, many times you will see that languages may, jo syllable ke syllable matlab, the word ki beginning pe voiced sound zada hoti hai. Beginning pe T zada nahi hoti, uh, sorry, uh, voiceless zada nahi hoti. Uh, and if you read the word beam, uh, there are sounds which are similar with beat. Beam, beat. The only difference is with the consonant, the final consonant, t and m. So the t and m are contrasting sounds, and only because we know they are different, I can call them phonemes. I can call them independent, different, distinct, individual phonemes. Phonemes are always written in slashes like these. This is for students of phonetics. Always, you know, if so, ye phoneme nahi hai. Ye to alphabet hai. But these individual sounds are, they say E, you will put it, put them in these slashes. Now, by replacing T with M, the meaning has changed. Not only the spellings have changed, but phonologically speaking, now the meaning of the word has changed. Not just changed, but we have found a new, we have added a meaning to our vocabulary. Beat, by the way, B double E T is Maybe name of a fruit or maybe some something, something to eat. Beam of the sun, beam, beams, sun rays, like that. Uh, <clears throat> now there is this new lesson, we have to look at this a bit carefully. So far we have been doing different sounds, but in all languages you have one sound ka different variations as well. We don't call them phonemes, we call them allophones. Abhi uska baat karta hoon. Let's take a phoneme, P. You understand the, when I say phoneme? How do you define a phoneme? 
a distinct, independent, different from other sounds. But it is a sound, not a letter. So let's take P, if it is readable to you. Now the phoneme P, in English at least, can be pronounced in not one way, but three different ways, or maybe more. There is something called aspiration. Aspiration means when you use a sound, you also release an additional air with it. In Tibetan, mein there, is, there is a word P, and then there is a word P. So I can call that these P and P are phonemes. But in English, mein you don't have P and P. I mean, there is no phoneme called P. But in English, mein you use these uh, sounds at different positions and then they become allophones. Allophone kya hota hai? Same phoneme ka different possibilities of pronunciation. So sometimes P is aspirated. Uska kya matlab hai? Ki P ke saath little bit of a H sound will be given. We'll look at some examples. And sometimes, let's take this word PIT. I mean PIT is a word. We understand. How do you say this word? Of course, we normally say pit, but if you listen to native speakers, they would produce an additional airflow. They would say pit, uh, maybe a little less than this, but more than just pit. Huh? So pit. Now this only happens if p comes at the beginning of the word. If you look at the word spit, it will be unaspirated. What will be unaspirated? The phoneme p will be unaspirated. Unaspirated matlab, koi additional air saath mein nahi aayega. Similarly, t, uh, teacher. So now at the beginning I'm aspirating it. I'm not saying teacher, which, which I may say in Hindi, like in Indian English, but teacher is different from stick. So the second sound, sound in stick is not with an additional air. Now this happens in all languages. You have aspirated sounds, you have unaspirated sounds. Uh, we call them allophones. How is allophone different from phoneme? Allophone is, now technically speaking, allophone is a set of multiple possible spoken sounds or phones, sounds are phones, or different signs used for a single phoneme in a particular language. Jaise p or t, p and t, and it, it will work. Similarly, uh, k, um, at the beginning of the word, uh, you would you would aspirate the k at the second position. You will not you will unaspirate it not as uh, without any aspiration. Let's take an example of t very quickly. Huh? So consonants have allophones. Matlab same phoneme ka multiple possibilities of producing sounds. Now um, in American English, for example, South of Ameri South of America, not South America, but South of America. May sounds are produced differently from, from the upper regions. And these allophones are, uh, are, they come into play a lot. I'm thinking of the three regions of Tibet and the dialects. So the same phoneme will be slightly differently pronounced in some, some different area. I cannot confirm it, but I guess, I guess that in all languages you have these multiple possibilities with the same phoneme. Now let's take an example. The word is, the first word, now, if you say tick, that will be different from how native speakers or South of America wala speaker, he would say tick. Uh, and that's why there is a small h aspiration. But the moment it moves to the second position, it will be with unaspirated, stick, normal. Similarly, hits, no aspiration, t, hit, t, hits. And this fourth case is a new one. We don't use it. Woi South of America wala use, use, they use them. So instead of saying bitter, jo hum Indian English mein bol dete hai, bitter, they would say bitter, uh, which is very different. Now that is an, an allophone of t. So now you have three cases, t, t, and almost, almost a d, bitter. Uh, we call it a flap sound. I mean, let's not go into... Uh, so American English may these differences are there. Let's look at some phonological rules, like phonology works according to rules. So one rule which we have already seen is called aspiration rule. All languages will have this 
एडिशनल एयर और नो एयर विद द सेम फोनीम जैसे प ट क में देखा बट द रूल इज इंग्लिश में द रूल इज दैट दीज साउंड इन ऑर्डर टू एस्पिरेट मस्ट अकर एज द फर्स्ट साउंड इन अ स्ट्रेस्ड सिलेबल आई एम रीडिंग फ्रॉम हियर दीज साउंड मस्ट अकर एज द फर्स्ट साउंड जैसे पिट एंड द सिलेबल शुड बी स्ट्रेस्ड नाउ सिलेबल क्या होता है सिलेबल इज वन वॉबल साउंड इन अ वर्ड we will come to syllables very soon <clears throat> but the moment this first sound changes position to the second aspiration rule fails now english mein aise kaam karta hai then you have some three four rules huh? insertion rules when you speak languages sometimes you insert an additional sound which is not even there in the written spellings for example there is a word called hamster right here hamster is the name of an animal hamster so when you normally say hamster hamster it's okay but when you speak very fast again i'm thinking of the american english speak very fast you tend to add insert insert add an additional p while speaking not while writing while speaking only so what have what are we looking at we have looked at the physical feature of phonetics now we are looking at the various possibilities of phonological meaningful possibilities so instead of calling it hamster mostly tez tez bolunga to bola jayega hamster hamster which is which is also uh, uh, slightly disappointing because we are adding an additional sound normally tez bolne mein to we skip sounds but this also happens with languages if insert insertion can be possible deletion can be also possible so sometimes some sounds are deleted by, by by the way when i listen to the english which tibetan students speak in the class i my ear is sensitive to hearing many inserted sounds which are not there in english and and i also listen to many deleted sounds like for example they would they would pluralize a word that plural is not there the sir is not there at the end but i listen to that ye wo wahi ho raha hai ho kya raha hai ki from your own phonol phonology of tibetan some mix mixing up is going on with the phonology of a different language which is english once again if you know this these rules wohi japanese wala you will not say uh, you know i so okay you will not say like that if if you know that all these things work in different languages one little mention of there are many things but one little mention of a word called minimal pair in phonetics in phonology when word meaning changes we have to explain it how it changes it changes by replacing one consonant jaise ki yahan pe describe kiya hai ki you have a word like pill you have a word like bill so phonetically speaking they are p e l now p is a voiceless i, I hope you can recognize what it means voiceless you understand bilabial what does that mean bilabial when both the lips and it's a stop ye bahut pehle kiya tha you know 6 months ago nahi 6 months ago nahi uh, 16 minutes ago maybe stop st stop is uh, the sound when you stop the air and then release it so p is one of them b ko aise likh sakte ho ki it's a voiced bilabial stop now minimal pair ka matlab hai that that minimum sound which changes the meaning according to these properties of phonetics are called minimal play pairs huh? so minimal pair will be in this case minimal pair is p and b pair ban gaya na now these pairs are going to replace if we exchange them they are going to change the meaning of not just the meaning but also the the voice quality also the physical properties of you know if you change it to voiced voiceless ban jayega voiceless voiced ban jayega similarly t and k gil kil mein bhi hoga so minimal pairs is something which helps us to differentiate words according to the meanings i mean कौन सा साउंड चेंज करेंगे तो कौन सा मीनिंग चेंज होगा बट ऑल्सो द मैनर द पोजिशन ऑफ दैट वर्ड ना जस्ट लुक एट हिंदी फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई ब्रॉड दिस लेट्स लुक एट टू और थ्री हिंदी का वर्ड्स एंड आई एम नाउ यूजिंग वेरी टेक्निकल फोनेटिक वोकेबलरी मिनिमल पेयर उसका हिंदी का ट्रांसलेशन देन फोनीम देन फोनेटिक डिस्क्रिप्शन फोनेटिक डिस्क्रिप्शन मतलब दैट दैट फोनीम इज टेकिंग प्लेस समवेयर involving some organs physical properties so for example you have a word called pal and how do i know it's pal because the first sound is p the second sound is the shortest sound in english we call it schwa 
वी विल कम टू इट सम टाइम वो कैसे साउंड आता है द शॉर्टेस्ट साउंड इन इंग्लिश राइट एट द बिगिनिंग ऑफ अब द वर्ड इज अब तो द वेरी फर्स्ट साउंड इज अ द शॉर्टेस्ट साउंड बट इट इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट साउंड इन इंग्लिश सो प इज फॉलोड बाई अ एंड देन फॉलोड बाई ल विच हैज डिफरेंट प्रॉपर्टीज एनी वन अंडरस्टैंड द मीनिंग ऑफ द वर्ड पल हिंदी का हिंदी का पल सो द द ट्रांसलेशन इज ऑल्सो गिवन इट्स कॉल्ड अ मोमेंट of course don't sing that song uh, then it's phonetically speaking of course the phoneme is transcribed like this and it is unaspirated hindi mein hindi mein you don't say phal because then the then that will be a completely different word so now we understand how to, how to explain with physical features unaspirated you understand unaspirated there is no additional air hindi mein at least there is no additional air english mein english wala usse bolega फल बट हिंदी वाले के लिए वो फ्रूट ले आएगा एंड पहले वो बात कर रहा था टाइम की एंड इट विल बी लॉट ऑफ कंफ्यूजन वी दैट्स वाई टू टू फिनिश द कंफ्यूजन दिस स्टडी इज इंपॉर्टेंट वही जैपनीज में और इंग्लिश में हिंदी में और और इंग्लिश में एंड टिबेटन में एंड इंग्लिश में बट हिंदी में देर इज अनदर एस्पिरेटेड वॉइसलेस बाइलेबल स्टॉप विच हिंदी में वो वो पूरा का पूरा क्या है साउंड uh, है इंग्लिश में एलोफोन है सो इन इंग्लिश में एलोफोन है इफ यू रिमेंबर इंग्लिश में फ कोई कोई साउंड ही नहीं है फ बट हिंदी का फल और फल फल होता है ना कोई साउंड टिबेटन में भी है विच मीन्स फ्रूट एंड उसको ट्रांसक्राइब ऐसे करते हैं वी से इट इज एस्पिरेटेड इट इज वॉइसलेस यू नो एंड इट्स अ बाइलेबल स्टॉप एंड दिस वन इज पाल द लॉन्ग साउंड इन द मिडल इज अ वॉबल साउंड पाल इफ यू हर्ड पालना पालना किसी को पालो पाल इज टू टेक केयर ऑफ एंड आई डोंट नो वाई दिस गाय इज नॉट डिस्क्राइबिंग वी कैन डिस्क्राइब नाउ फाइनली आई कम टू सिलेबल्स ऑल ऑफ दिस साउंड कॉन्सोनेंट्स वॉवल्स पोजिशन फिजिकल प्रॉपर्टीज कॉम्बिनेशन मेंटल फंक्शनल ये जो भी अभी तक किया है ये इसलिए इंपॉर्टेंट है ताकि हम साउंड्स के आगे जा सकें यू नो For example, I learn Tibetan. I will spend some months in learning the sounds. क्या aspirated है क्या नहीं है कहाँ पे voice है कहाँ voiced है you know voiceless है all of that. If I am a very serious student of Tibetan phonetics, I will have to go through that. The same Japanese will also have to agree to this. लेकिन once you do that, you are now ready to look at syllables. Syllable. Now there are three things: words, syllables, sounds. Sounds are the smallest units, individual phonemes. Then you have the syllables. Syllable क्या होता है? Units within words. So when you combine vowel sounds and consonant sounds within a word, like a word like father. Now there are many sounds in this word. How many sounds, by the way? This is a good question. Huh? How many sounds are there in the word father? Now, those who are saying five. will think twice will think thrice kyunki 5 is the number of letters f f a t h e r nahi wo to 6 ho gaya ha so i don't know what is the calculation with 5 but when you say fa already these are two sounds f and a and then you have the and followed by schwa the shortest sound a fa the a father four okay um uh, look at this word uh, i am i am throwing many new words to to you uh, today this is an american word word called lola paloza paloza lola paloza uh, so i uh, even it was new to me so i checked the meaning it means excellent uh, it means something very very special but this is informal informal samajhte ho na ki you don't go to the office and you say sir this is lola paloza i mean you you don't really use this because pata nahi kya ho jayega phir Uh, but this is an informal word and why have we taken this word because we want to understand the parts units of the word now <clears throat> this word lola palooza can be divided into how many parts how can we know this by counting the number of vowel sounds very very important i had a discussion with uh, the, the tibetan teacher lakpa singh ji about how tibetan me syllables are made Uh, you know combinations of vowels and consonants so it, it was very interesting 
and I came to know that most of the words have consonants and consonants and con and then followed by vowels and maybe maybe another part of a vowel, a second vowel. So phonetics of Tibetans, I came to understand, works differently, not similar to English. Now uh, let us divide this into five groups. Kaise kiya maine? Yahan pe jo dikh raha hai. Why have we put a full stop after lo? Because this is one syllable. How do I know it is one syllable? Because there is one vowel sound in the part in the unit lo. L is the consonant sound, but immediately followed by a vowel o. Not not sure. Uh, the first very first. Uh, I mean this one if, if, lo, followed by l. मुझे कैसे पता चला इट्स ल बिकॉज द ट्रांसक्रिप्शन शोज ल प्लस अ ल अगेन प देन लू देन ज लॉलप लूज द करेक्ट प्रोनाउंसिएशन ऑफ दिस नाउ वी कॉल दीज ग्रुप्स ऑफ साउंड आई एम आई एम गिविंग टेक्निकल डेफिनेशन ऑफ बाय द वे दोज ऑफ यू हुर फॉलोइंग अ स्लीप एट दिस आवर to them i want to say that you should you could have slept earlier now you cannot because syllable is the the soul of of speech of spoken languages sounds will be you know anyone can learn sounds of any language but how do you bring those those sounds vowels and consonants together and count the number of syllables and then divide the word because uske baad ek cheez aayega stress and we have to talk about stress but uh If I can just take a small break and give you an exercise, this is a workshop, isn't it? Uh, an exercise, pehle for ten minutes, and then I I finish with syllables and stress. Uh, which which exercise? Uh, this one is. जो अभी तक किया है. This is an exercise which you will be doing. Small one. I'll come to you, and uh, and let's play the game. I mean, be sport. So then we continue. Uh, it's going to be a bit long, but. i'm very quickly going to explain the questions these are not very difficult questions even if you are not able to follow the good thing is that you tried to exercise whatever learned was learned today you tried to understand ki ye phonetics this whole paper is about phonetics not phonology uh phonetics ka matlab ki what are those positions what are those words how are these sounds produced some of these questions are very simple question 1 there are three consonants that are produced by using both the lips hence we call them bilabial samajh mein aa raha hai right but the following me se kaun sa aisa hai jo bilabial nahi hai n is not so this is clear ha huh? second one f or v two sounds are made when you use upper teeth and lower lip you can actually try that v jaise victory mein first sound v so your lower lip and upper teeth are almost almost together similarly and we call these sounds labio dental dental dant or labio lips similarly you have th jaise think mein ya father mein humne dekhna hai ki wo th sound ka place kaun sa hai in the mouth so dental hai retroflex hai alveolar hai ya velar velar is at the back almost in the gala so wahan se to th to nahi it's it's a front wala sound ha huh? and alveolar kaun sa hota hai sound alveolar alveolar is exactly behind the upper teeth so teeth are not involved just behind the jise hum palate bolte hain alveolar ridge bolte hain matlab daant se zara zara sa piche i am sure tibetan mein bhi koi sound hoga so alveolar bhi th nahi ho sakta and retroflex is actually there is only one retroflex sound if you want to understand र साउंड जो है वो इंग्लिश का बड़ा ट्रिकी साउंड है र इन विच यू ऑलमोस्ट रोल द टंग एंड देन ओनली प्रोड्यूस आर यू नो इफ यू से आर तो यू आर रोलिंग योर टंग इन साइड ना ना वंस अगेन दिस इज नॉट जो थ में यूज नहीं होता सो स्टूडेंट्स आर राइट टॉकिंग ऑफ द डेंटल साउंड सो एलवियो थर्ड वन एलवियोलर साउंड आर प्रोनाउंसड बाई यूजिंग एलवियोलर रिच अभी बात कर रहे थे upper teeth and as its passive articulator and the tongue of the tip as its moving articulator so alveolar may tongue of the tip is also actively going to take that position tabhi hoga na wo kaun sa alveolar sound jaise l right at the 
and which of the following are is not one of the English alveolar sounds? <coughs> so r, r is is not because rest t, t b you know your tongue is almost at the front. L right there. S now s may even though the tongue is not touching the it's not touching the the teeth, but it's close to the position is the same. S the tongue tongue पीछे तो नहीं चला गया ना it's it's still at the front right. Consonants are classified according to their glottis. If you remember, where is the glottis? In other words, consonants can be described by either voiced or voiceless. ये शुरू में किया था. Which of the following is not not voiced? Uh, which of the following is the odd one one out exception? मतलब कि चारों में से तीन जो होंगे वो will have similar properties. या voiceless या voiced. एक जो होगा will be different. So you can you can find it. G, B, D. All three of them are voiced, but P is voiceless. So this is this is the odd one out. Which of the following is a voiced consonant? I am not going to do it because you can test it. See it. Okay. Well done. Good. Congratulations. Uh, six. What is the organ that modify? Modify का क्या मतलब है? Changes. Which is the organ that changes the air flow? so that the sound becomes so it determines whether the sound is nasal or oral Na so those sounds nasal and oral matlab through the mouth so wh again what is the organ that changes the air flow so it determines whether sound is nasal or oral matlab which is the part of the the Sound system which is involved to change that air flow. Sari sounds oral hi hai already. The nose changes it into a nasal, nasal sound. There are similarities between p, b, m except, except that these three sounds are not. All of them are not voiced. We have just seen p is voiceless. These are the similarities between sounds t, d, n except. Now, consonantal का मतलब है कि कि these are consonants and all three of them are consonants, no problem. All three of them are nasal. All three of them are are stops. Stops मतलब you stop the air and then release it. T, d, n, they are stops. So all three of them are not nasal, which means exception is the option nasal. Why are some sounds called stop? Well, you can find it, huh? The air stream is completely blocked in the oral cavity for a short period. Why are some sounds called friction? Remember, friction fricatives, because some some organs will rub and not let the air freely flow. So it, it there is no obstacle in saying the sound galat hai because friction may obstacle hoga. It vibrates. Well, we don't even know the word in producing the sound. In producing the sound, the air flow is so severely Roka, roka obstructed that it causes causes friction. It stops us from saying the sound. Nonsense. <laughs> uh, the last one, not the last one. What is the similarity between sounds p and t? Well, you tell me. Both of them are. Both of them are voiceless. Yes. Uh, both of them are oral. Is also correct by the way. Approximant is not correct. Fricative, fricative may, जैसे f और v may sound मुश्किल से निकलेगा वो p और t are p is a stop, so it's it cannot both of them cannot be fricatives. They are voiceless. Now the last one is interesting. Most sounds are actually fricatives. Yes or no? Now most sounds का मतलब है out of those 44 sounds, most most का मतलब a large number of sounds are fricatives. The answer is yes. I mean Uh, vowel sounds may the air is free flowing but zyada ginti mein the number is more with sounds coming uh... all right so let's let's work maybe for 15 more minutes about something we we call syllables Now, as we speak, uh, we can divide words, any word, into a number of syllables. Words can be single syllable, double syllable, three syllables. Tibetan, maybe there can be words. Most of our names are double syllables. 
and we have to understand even english mein aur tibetan mein punjabi mein my name is two syllables mujhe kaise pata chala my name is two syllables so what is a syllable simply speaking syllable is a vowel sound i mean in order to call a unit of a word uh, as a syllable i need one vowel sound uh, otherwise i cannot cannot call it a syllable so just meet as two vowel sounds two syllables similarly karma has to and tenzin has to and setan has to uh, you know mostly two but then there are there are some exceptions now why are syllables important <clears throat> syllables are important because um uh, because the combination of sounds uh because the combination of sounds especially in english language will not be equally divided i mean the sounds will combine but the the amount of time that you are going to spend on speaking some sounds will not be the same in english language in some other languages it it may be the same mai kya baat kar raha hu thoda sa mai jaldi bhi jaldi mein bhi hu i have some slides to cover up uh now i am reading some lines from here uh, uh, the second paragraph i am reading huh? the phonologists treat vowels at as heart of the syllables otherwise syllables cannot live if you have a vowel you have a syllable and syllables have something vowel like in them consonant li consonants like the b can't be syllables and i have just explained and uske baad nucleus and coda is something i am not going to do today but uh, this is a small example of how all languages will combine sounds and call them consonant vowels maybe it's too small for today but uh, we call it syllabic structure after understanding what is a syllable we have to talk about syllabic structure uh, so if you can read words like a b eb but skit desk skimp and then scrimped you will understand that some words have only one vowel sound some words have do they have two for example uh, the last word scrimped how do we know it has it no it also has one vowel sound huh? now some combinations of of sounds are difficult in all these words you can see the structure ki isme ek vowel sound hai like a b eb and we we write it by giving a sign c or v the same thing will go with with tibetan or any other language um now syllables are also more important because if you want to speak correct pronunciations you should know you must know exactly where is the vowel sound the position of the vowel sound how many consonant it is it surrounded by i i give you a word for example knife you write the word knife and jo maine bola tha letters is not our concern how many letters are there by the way Five. 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 How many sounds are there? Two. Syllables? No. I'm I'm asking you about the sounds. So be very careful with with these words. So the first, so k is silent, है ना? Similarly, जैसे जैसे Tibetan में there are many names I find silent letters. Huh? So this is again to show that we are not going to read the letters. We are going to speak the sounds. So the first sound is n. Second is the vowel. i and the last is the f the fricative so knife has three sounds letters are five number of syllables will depend upon how many vowels are there one so knife is one vowel um this this is a line of poetry jo jo log poetry bahut padhte hain ya pasand karte hain unke liye syllable is extremely important of course uh this is a poem in our shastri second i think first semester some students like this line so much that before they sleep they this uh, you know uh, recite it uh, I, that's a joke by the way uh, many times tiger tiger burning bright now the moment you read these words you have immediately you see sounds as well as vowels consonants on the knowledge on the basis of that knowledge you can divide the words into those units syllables so the very first word tiger and don't be so afraid of the of the tiger and or the spellings of the the tiger because even though they are not correct the poet is using old spellings or creative spellings of the word tiger 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 now apart from the 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 first syllable which is tai apart from that there is also a small symbol of stress what we call stress 
English is a stressed language. Isi se main thoda khatam karunga. Then there is one little exercise uh, which we have to do. Uh, how many syllables are there in the word tiger? How do we know that? There are two vowel sounds. Which two vowel sounds? I am only asking you for the vowel sounds now. The first one is I. Wait. The first one is I. And the second one? This is where the schwa comes. The, the shortest. G ke baad immediately have a. G. Tiger. But in English, after you know how do you understand the syllables, you have to understand which syllable, jaise word mein there are two syllables, you have to understand which syllable is stressed. Stress ka matlab wo tension wala, pressure wala stress nahi. Uh, blood pressure wala stress nahi. Stress simply means when you press something, put some pressure, wo bhi uska ek matlab hota hai, stress. So English is a stressed language ka matlab hai ki all the words will not be, agar pura ka pura word hai, usme teen syllable hai, char syllable hai, English people will not put stress on all the syllables. If you try to put the stress on, on both the syllables, aap bologe, tiger, tiger. But the correct pronunciation is tiger, tiger. Uh, how do we know this? This is a noun. There are some rules with, with uh, stress rules, uh, vowel rules, syllabic structure rules. Most nouns in English language take the stress on the first syllable. Tiger is a, is a noun. Adjectives also take the stress on the first syllable. Which, which adjective in this line? Is there any adjective in the, in the line? Bright. So stress at the beginning. And forest is a noun. Stress at the beginning. So how does it know this line? Mein? By bolding it or by putting the stress mark. And students can do something like... Now let me briefly, very briefly say that what, does I, what do I mean if I say English is a stressed language? If you say this word, which word? C-A-N-A-D-A in French, even in Hindi, to aap bologe Canada or something like that. But in English, phonetics won't work like that. English ke liye especially the, the stress uh, rules, word stress, we call it word ke andar ka stress is extremely important. So instead of saying Canada, now Canada mein maine kya kiya? Maine ka, na, da, the three syllables, I have put equal, I have highlighted them equally, I am giving equal breadth on all the syllables ka, na, da, Canada. Like in English mein you will, you will hear Canada. So you have spent your energy on the first syllable being a noun, ka, and then schwa a jayega, na, na, da, Canada. And that's why when, when you say names of countries, you say Russia. And that's why when you say uh, names of even um, even names, nouns, all nouns will have the stress on the first. Isili Angre's log when they say names, aapka bhi name, they will they would have put all the stress at the beginning, or baki ka aapka naam thoda thoda dhire dhire khatam hota jayega. For example, for example, there was a cricketer uh, Sehwag. Huh? Sehwag. What is the full name? Okay. Now English. Commentary mein, jab maine suna to wo usse bol raha hai, say back. Uh, wo usse aise bol raha hai. Lekin, Dilli mein ka rehne wala hai, huh? uske ghar wale usse bolte hai, say vag. They are putting the stress on the second syllable. Usko, matlab, stress ka matlab, ki you are rising, you are raising the second syllable more than the first. Jaise even my name, Punjabi name, local, we follow the rule of, of putting the stress on the second. Just me, mere ghar wale mujhe kahen, just meet. But if, if a foreigner, is, if an English native speaker would call me, he would say, just meet. The, clearly the stress is on the first. Similarly, nouns will have the stress on Canada. And, um, uh, and you can do with, with your names, similar. Now there are some rules, stress rules. Quickly, I will summarize that English language works like this. One word will, ha will have the main, st uh, uh, one single syllable agar hai kisi word mein, so wo stress hi hoga. Jaise pin, chart, nose. You have only one syllable and that one syllable will be stressed. But if you have two syllables and the word is noun or adjective, abhi humne kiya, then the stress is at the beginning. For example, 
present. For example, export. For example, adjective clever. Ab main dono pe to main clever or clever. But I have to stress only the first, clever. In, in fact, the schwa will come in the second syllable. Um, another rule says if you have two syllables, bisyllabic verbs, if the words are verbs, then you shift the stress to the second syllable. Wohi word present can be used as a verb and you say I present. So now you have shifted and stressed the second syllable. Pehle ko chota kar diya and second ko aapne zent bola. So I can say this sentence. I want to present you with a present. Two, two same words, same spellings but different parts of speech. The stress is, stress is not going to behave in the same way. This is what I mean by English is a stressed language. Now, I tried to understand Tibetan mein stress kaise kaam karta hai and to my knowledge it came to be ki aise rules us mein kaam nahi karte hai. Every language will have their own set of rules. Tibetan mein mostly the stress is at the beginning. Uh, I mean, this is what I, I read somewhere. Ki mostly, zyada tar you, you will just put itna complicated nahi hai. But remember that Japanese guy or Tibetan or Vietnamese student who wants to speak English will have to learn these phonetic rules, phonological uh, systems. So if you have a verb like export, the, the noun was export, which is a noun, but when you export something, you are doing something, use, using it as a verb. Begin clearly. So this is a better way to practice by writing capital letters for stressed uh, syllable, uncapital letters for unstressed syllables. If you practice that, you will learn quickly, you know, you will learn how to pronounce correctly in English language. Similarly, those words ending with a ik, shun or shun will have the stress on the th third, la uh, second last syllable. Last, not but second last, like examination. So what you, what you are doing is raising your voice a little bit at the stressed syllable. So, it's not that whatever you have Japanese or anyone else will say it. No. Uh, when you have multi-syllabic syllabic words, more than two syllables, more than three syllables, these rules will come into play. And there are more rules, but we don't have time to look into it. For those who are interested, we'll uh, arrange something else. Like geographic, like geologic, television. You, you raise the, the syllable, that second last syllable, a little. Revelation examination, situation, you can, you can, there are so many hundreds of words ending with shun. And then of course, CY, TY, PHY, just a photography, hai jase. Uh, it's difficult to read. Yes, a democracy, CY endings and GHY endings, PHY endings, etc. <clears throat> now, finally, of course, uh, I'm coming to the close of it. I have not discussed each and everything in phonetics. It's impossible to do in, in this one class. But I have covered the basics of, like, sabse badi baat to ye hai ki to understand the difference between phonetics and phonology. If you can explain that to a layman, I think that would be enough work for today. Now, finally, we use these two terms, segments and features in phonetics. Jo, these two words I've already discussed, but vocabulary is different. Two different concepts. Segments are the individual speech sounds. What do we call these individual speech, speech sounds in phonetics? Technically, there is a word for it. Speech sounds, remember speech sounds? P, B, M, huh? Phonemes, good? Phonemes, phone, sound, remember? So phonemes are the individual speech sounds, which can segment bhi bol sakte hain. But every segment, Segments can be grouped together, you know, like per, per can be brought together and we can form syllables. Segments combine to form syllables. Now, each segment in every language will have features. Features ka matlab properties, characteristics. Ye humne already kar liya hai. Kya kiya hai? Now, segments and features will be common to all languages. Humne ye kiya hai. For example, agar b is a phoneme, Agar b is a speech sound, we can call it a segment. Segment, samajh no? Segment matlab tukda, parts, unit, simple. For the segment b, we have these set of features. Aaj saare, saare lecture mein humne ye kiya hai. So believe yourself. Kya kiya hai? Ki b is a consonant 
and if it is a consonant you will put a plus sign if it is a vowel you will you can write minus consonant then it is a continuant continuant ka matlab hai ki uh, you know the the sound is produced and then it continues and joins with another another segment um uh, sorry sorry uh, it is not a continuant the negative sign shows it is not a continuant nasal sounds for example n is is a is a consonant but a continuant the sound continues flows but b stop b is a stop that's what we did b stops it so not a continuant minus mein likha hai not a nasal it is not a nasal sound minus mein likha hai is it a voiced or voiceless sound ye to aaj pata chali gaya hai it is a voiced sound plus mein likha hai it is a labial sound both the lips are, are involved in it these are the features of segments so every language will have segments phonemes uh, jisko aap slash mein daloge and it will have features so itna to samajh mein aaya hai ki ki phonetics is important because if you want to pronounce correctly if you want to speak communicate effectively you will have to learn features you will have to first of all to you will need to know how many sounds exist in a given language if it is a foreign language so this japanese guy usko sikha ke chhodunga ki there are 44 you cannot say anything that you like uh hence finally ice hockey i am not using technical language hence the word ice hockey shall phonetically and phonology phonologically be only said as ice hockey not ice hockey uh it will not be and birthday cake will not cannot be said as bazude cakey uh and a nod of the japanese we will not take it because we are doing this technical rules of phonetics and phonology so just to briefly summarize aaj kya kiya we have just covered by and large covered the whole field of one level of language which is sounds phonetics theek hai then we have looked at looked at the technical definitions of phonetics kya hota hai because uh, every language ka pronunciation will work on two levels the form physical form and the mental operations jisko hum phonetics bolte hain phonology bolte hain and then we have talked about differences between individual sounds once you know the sounds then you come to syllables stress and of course there are so many other rules that we did uh how do you make minimal pairs phonological rules aspiration kya hota hai voiced voiceless kya hota hai allophone allophone remember i, I mean this was not in the quiz oh by the way can you help come here and uh, distribute one more uh, if you have understood what is stress if you have understood what is vowel what is consonant remember the the basic definition between how do we differentiate vowel and consonant air flow rukavat wala air flow theek hai so this one should be easy it it's it involves there are 10 words all you have to do is guess or make the best analysis of these words jo capital mein likha hai wo stress hai jo capital mein nahi likha hai part of that syllable is unstressed so you will just have to you just have to choose ki correct stress kahan pe hai english mein should it be plastic or should it be plastic do different hai na if you put it at the beginning to bolne mein aata hai plastic if you put it at the second to bolne mein aayega plastic fir pehle wala chota ho jayega whichever you think is right just just choose that okay i i presume you have gone through all the words even the word vocabulary written correctly the second syllable is stressed so usko bolenge kaise aise ki first first syllable will be unstressed unstressed syllables mein schwa chota sa sound aata hai v so wo kehna wo kehna is not correct v cab right at the beginning vocabulary then should it be i mean this is this should be simple should it be plastic ya plastic plastic first one okay do you want to be a kya hona chahiye ye second wala hona chahiye photograph to is the stressed syllable or because second is stressed first will have the schwa f fo nahi f photo photograph photographer 
एंड थर्ड वन इज अ नाउन अब ये फोटोग्राफ नहीं होना होना चाहिए फोटोग्राफ होना चाहिए फोटो राइट एट द बिगिनिंग द नेक्स्ट वर्ड इज अ वर्ड यू लाइक ऑल ऑफ यू हाँ टू टू सिलेबल्स फर्स्ट वन राइट चाइना एंड कम कंप्यूटर फर्स्ट वन नंबर सिक्स का बताओ ओके सो कुछ तो आज हो रहा है लाइक like, कुछ तो फायदा हो रहा है ओके डिसाइड बट अल्टीमेटली बोलना ठीक है यू नो इफ यू वॉन्ट टू स्पीक करेक्टली वर्ड स्ट्रेस विल बी एक्सट्रीमली इंपॉर्टेंट डिसाइड साइड स्ट्रेस हो गया तो डी छोटा हो जाएगा डिसाइड अंडरस्टैंड सेकेंड वाला सेकेंड वाला अंडरस्टैंड इम इम्पॉर्टेंट फर्स्ट वन इम इज द अनस्ट्रेस सिलेबल पॉ एंड बाय द वे देर इज नॉट अ रूल अभी टाइम नहीं है कि आर आफ्टर द वॉवल साउंड गो साइलेंट सो यू डोंट नीड टू से इम्पॉर्टेंट आर इज साइलेंट हाँ इम्पॉर्टेंट देन दिस कौन सा सेकेंड या सेकेंड नंबर नाइन बिकॉज इट्स अ शन कन्वर्ट लेकिन बोलोगे कैसे मुझे तो गुड कन्वर्सेशन The last one is a verb. Verbs may stress is on the second syllable. But if it is on the second, तो first में schwa मतलब छोटा सा अ जगह ले लेगा pr pro नहीं pr and then of course you raise the volume a little pronounce. So the next time I meet you next week I will be talking of syntax मतलब words. Now we'll have to talk about written. language and the grammar of it syntactical structures and all to aaj kam se kam we have just understood the minimum thing we have understood is that if you if you are a foreign learner you will have to focus on all the rules of physical properties mental relations of of a language if i am going to do tibetan same story goes so then see you next week thank you thank you so much thank you.